Welcome to This Week in Racing, and we are at the end, finally, of the miserable month of May. Hey, guess what? You made it. You made it through this month, and now we can start looking forward. Of course, some racing did come back this month. We got NASCAR back, and we've got IndyCar coming next month, IMSA coming the month after that, uh, and hopefully Formula One as well. So racing is slowly starting to come back. Of course, we've also had the dirt tracks uh, open up as well. Uh, things are starting to get back to normal, uh, and I'm definitely here for it. I'm excited. Uh, to get our kind of belated racing season back underway. And we do have a lot of stuff to talk about in this video, particularly, uh, particularly pertaining to some of the uh, some of the ramifications of opening things up, some of the some of the things that some of these racing series have had to change uh, in order to put on their shows uh, in the next couple of weeks as well as uh, the Formula One changes. Those are the big ones. Those were coming anyway. Um, obviously, the COVID situation has changed them a little bit. We're going to talk about uh, some of the implications that that has had on the Formula One world already. And then finally, we're going to talk about the latest and hopefully last video game controversy I'm going to have to talk about this year. But uh, it seems every time I say, I hope this is the last one, yet another one comes up. Anyway, it's this week in racing. Sit back, strap in, and let's get going. IndyCar will return next Saturday night to Texas Motor Speedway in prime time, but it was originally going to be broadcast on NBC Sports Network, but I've got to give a huge, massive shout out to all the folks at IndyCar, all the folks at NBC for cooler heads prevailing, and uh, that this race will be broadcast prime time network television on the big NBC. This is a huge opportunity uh, for IndyCar. Now, I'm not saying that these are going to be absolutely mammoth TV ratings. I think the TV ratings uh, for NASCAR uh, put things into a realistic perspective of what to expect, but I think uh, a lot of NASCAR fans are going to tune in. I think it's going to be a very solid TV number uh, for IndyCar, and I think it's a good thing for the sport. Uh, and I think, again, it was cooler heads prevailing. This was something, there was no Saturday Night Live or anything else uh, that really seemed like it should have taken priority over live sports. Um, and I think it definitely reaffirms that NBC was the right partner for IndyCar to go with when they made that decision between them and ABC. Now, there are some on-track implications for the Texas race that we needed to talk about, re uh, reported by Racer.com, that there will be tire limits imposed on the competitors at Texas. There is a 35-lap stint limit per set of Firestone tires. And now the reason for that was because Firestone was unable to make specific tires for the Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, they'll be running on a combination of last year's tire as well as some of the tires that were intended uh, to be run in May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, now the other thing that's going to be uh, important to keep in mind here is that during the day, which of course includes practice uh, and for the rookies as well, a, a special 30-minute uh, test session before the official practice, practice qualifying, and then the race. Uh, entrance will only be allowed nine set of sets of tires, uh, so it's definitely going to be tire conservation. It's going to limit track time, uh, and hopefully uh, everything works out. But you know, when you start talking about big ovals and you start talking about limited track time, you start to get some Pocono fra flashbacks, and I hate to bring that up because, but that is kind of what you start thinking of. But of course, the other thing you start thinking of when you start talking about wacky strategy and pit windows, you start thinking about Dale Coyne breaking out his abacus and uh, and memeing Santino Ferrucci into a win uh, at the first race back of the season. Uh, stranger things have happened. Of course, Carlos Huertas won a race at Houston one time on Dale Coyne's strategy. Uh, so just keep that in mind going forward. Another super important thing that has come down the pipeline is that motorsports have become exempt from a COVID travel ban imposed by the U.S. government. Now, what that means is that international entries uh, that are deemed to be essential will now be allowed across the border to participate in events uh, pertaining to IMSA, IndyCar, SRO, uh, several organizations like that. There was some worry uh, that some international drivers were not going to be allowed to participate um, and in fact, from some countries, I think Brazil in particular, some drivers had to literally fly out at the last minute uh, in to, to make sure that they were going to be able to make the IMSA and IndyCar races. 
thankfully it looks like a lot of that uh, a lot of those fears have been quelled uh, it seems like it's going to be too late for some teams but at the very least it looks like some of those international entries for the Indianapolis 500 and I'm looking at like Fernando Alonso or Dragon Speed uh, they will hopefully be able to get all their equipment over here all their personnel and be able to go racing major major formula one news now we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks specifically in the context of ferrari and their potential uh, move once this budget cap comes for formula one but formula one officially announced their budget cap for uh, the next season and going forward, which is $145 million. That is now official. That is now what the teams in Formula One are working with to develop their race cars. There are also, also some restrictions on aerodynamic testing, uh, which is sure to affect some of the top, or te top teams. That at, least, at least that is the intention of the rule. Now, here's the big news and at least some of the ramifications from this, at least as it appears to me. There are some dominoes falling. Adam Stern reported that uh, Mercedes may be looking for a way out of Formula One, specifically through their Daimler, br br Daimler brand, easy for me to say. But even harder for me to say per perhaps is that uh, Lawrence Stroll and Aston Martin are looking at buying in to the Mercedes, uh, the, what is now currently known as the Mercedes Formula One team. Of course, that team began as Braun GP and was actually uh, bar, BAR Honda before that. That's uh, interesting because that means there's a potential of Lance Stroll and uh, I, I would assume Lewis Hamilton as teammates at some point in the future. I don't know. We'll just have to see. I know that the, that, that particular report uh, has been debunked uh, now. At least there was a quote in the media from Toto Wolff, but uh, this report specifically mentions that Toto Wolff would be out at Mercedes. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, but the other major news, and it comes from the other end of the grid, which is Williams has lost its Rokit uh, sponsorship. Uh, that was their title sponsor for this season and last, and its team is now for sale. Now, of course, Williams is the backmarking Formula One team. Uh, it's not like they are competing for wins, uh, but they are one of 10 Formula One teams currently in the world. And, see, and you have to assume, certainly the, the COVID situation has a, a major impact on how these Formula One teams have done business, but you also have to start thinking uh, that potentially uh, this budget cap may have burst a bubble that was existing in Formula One, and we're going to see uh, a lot more change than perhaps was originally intended when the budget cuts uh, were put into effect. Uh, it's it's going to be... Definitely interesting to see what happens going forward with Formula One and which teams are able to adapt to these changes, how these teams adapt to the changes, and which ones are around in the next couple of years. And finally, once again, another esports controversy, another driver in hot water, this time in its Formula E driver, Daniel Apt, who drove for, ironically, Apt Audi Sport. Uh, he used an eSports ringer in the most recent Formula E event, meaning that Daniel Apt did not drive as Daniel Apt. It was an eSports competitor. And, of course, uh, Audi did not see that as particularly good for a brand, which has uh, had some cheating scandals linked to it uh, that cost them a lot of money and a lot of public relations recently through their, uh, through their parent brand, Volkswagen. So Daniel Apt will no longer drive for the Audi Sport team in Formula E. And this is one that I feel I need to opine on a bit because, again, it's one of those things that I was talking about weeks ago. It almost, I think it was months ago now. And, and really, I kind of saw it coming in some respects uh, when I was kind of mulling some of this eSports transfer over, uh, or at least from real sports to eSports, um, during this COVID situation. And I always thought that the, the, I've always thought this, regardless of whether, whether it was actually the case, but I thought, I've always thought that esports do not work when they are replacing a real sport. In other words, you know, the Madden Bowl is never going to replace the NFL or the Super Bowl. 
Uh, and, and, and I don't think that ex expectation should ever be there. I think the Madden Bowl should be its own thing. It should be its own, you know, the thing that you watch. And it's, it's of course, going to be different as much as we hate that it is. It's going to be different from the real life thing. And I think the same thing applies uh, to esports and motor racing. Now, I would say that 100%, The Sims are much closer to real life uh, than virtually any other video game simulation of a, a nationally televised sport. There's no doubt about that. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of these racing series saw that, looked at it, and said, hey, we can put on something that's so close to the real thing uh, that no one's going to no notice the difference, our sponsors are going to be happy, uh, and, and everything's going to be you know, sunshine and rainbows. But I think a lot of these series did not understand going in um, how different the esports world is and what challenges would face them uh, when you have drivers live streaming everything, when you have uh, uh, no delay, when, when you have no real control over what's going on, and you also have drivers, and, and we will get to this, who perhaps aren't as motivated to race in a video game as they are uh, to race in real life. And certainly you look at a situation like Kyle Larson, and I, I don't want to lump that one in with the rest of these, uh, because I think that was going to happen regardless eventually, uh, whether or not he was playing a video game. But I think you look at some of these other situations, you look at the Lando Norris and Simon Pagano controversy, you look at Bubba Wallace losing his sponsor, and now you look at this with Daniel Apt. Uh, the, this this is this is a clash of cultures, I think, and I think a lot of people are, are not wrong in saying, "Look, man, this is a sponsorship obligation. Uh, this is something that clearly uh, Daniel was was unself aware who he was driving for when he did this, and the potential implications of getting caught uh, with a, an esports ring or cheating, so to speak, when when you're when the company you drive for is so." closely associated with a cheating scandal, um, no doubt about it. And I think even Audi pretty much admitted that under normal circumstances, this probably wouldn't have been a fireable offense. It was simply because of the association that they have had in the past. Um, but, you know, ultimately it comes down to the same thing. You've had drivers losing sponsors. You've had dri uh, drivers getting into massive social media controversies over this. And I think a lot of it has to do with, again, the fact that the series putting on these races don't understand esports, they don't understand sim racing, and they think that everything uh, that translates in the real world, they think they can just sit all these drivers down in their homes and pretend like it's a driver's meeting where the drivers are actually going to go strapped in, strap into the uh, cockpit and go risk their lives. Instead, you've got drivers in their home, they're comfortable. Um, in a lot of ways, they probably, uh, in fact, I know this, a lot of drivers get burnt out on this uh, uh, esports stuff really quickly. And, you know, again, it's their job and the sponsors are, yes, paying their salaries. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but, you know, it isn't exactly what they signed up for. And I think had some of these other series that I've personally raced in uh, run the esports leagues for, say, NASCAR or for IndyCar or for Formula E, and not really had the series involved. And I know, unfortunately, you know, you kind of got that TV element where uh, everybody was racing to get on TV with the esports stuff. Uh, and in some ways, it did uh, benefit, and in some ways, it didn't. But I think in a perfect world, you would not have. IndyCar sanctioning the IndyCar esports. You would bring in an outside group like Elite Racing, who I've raced with in the past, or maybe some other series to sanction it, to explain to the drivers what they're doing, uh, to penalize the drivers uh, rationally, uh, and then and to not take it so seriously. And when I say seriously, I, I don't want to be misinterpreted here, uh, because definitely. A lot of these esports pros take this incredibly seriously. They're incredibly professional. But when you've got professional racing drivers come in, coming in, they are going to have a different attitude. You have to kind of cater to that attitude. Otherwise, they're going to goof off and they're not going to take it as seriously as maybe they would if you were upfront with them, honest with them, 
and setting the expectations uh, early on about why they're there, what they're doing, and hopefully you make it a fun experience for them. But, you know, again, I don't want to be too hard on it because I do feel bad for a lot of the esports guys because ultimately every time it seems like they end up in the mainstream, it's because a driver is screwing up, uh, whether it's even related to the video game. Like, again, with Kyle Larson, I mean, that was just the most unfortunate thing in the world because everybody was saying, oh, he used the gamer word, and then it's like, oh, boy, he made the esports guys look look horrible. So I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm excited. This is one of the reasons I'm excited to get back to normal racing because I would like to see... Uh, I would like to see these real drivers in esports doing this, but I'd like to see them uh, under not such, uh, I don't want to say hostile circumstances, but they're definitely forced to, to do a lot of this stuff. I would like to see them a little bit more choosy about what they do, because I think there's a great marketing opportunity in here somewhere with the real drivers uh, doing iRacing or doing, uh, I mean, look at the, the Legends race that the race put on at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where you got Mario Andretti. I think that's very cool. I think more situations like that and less situations like officially sanctioned races that Formula E is putting on uh, where the drivers have a real chance of getting fired for doing something, you know, ultimately that doesn't really affect much of the real world. And ultimately, you know, the sponsors are paying to build the real cars. They're not paying for drivers to play video games. And I guess that's the big... And, you know, it's it's a weird issue, and I don't think it's going to be one that's going to be, I, I would hope, is not going to be one that continues into the future from the perspective of this kind of, the, the, the real drivers kind of being forced into this. I, I don't think it's going to be quite this way ever again. It's an interesting learning experience, though, and I, and I hope some of these series because i think they are going to try to to do this again i think they're going to try to put on winter leagues like indycar uh we'll probably try to do that and, and maybe some other series will try to do that with the real drivers uh i hope they they change some of the formula because it's not quite working right now and it and it's affecting the real thing which i think is that's the biggest sin but anyway that's the end of may thank god let's move forward indycar's coming back nascar's back we're getting back to normal folks just hang in there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. I think you're going to like the next week, by the way. Lots of IndyCar content coming.